Hi, and thank you for joining me today. My name's Laura Mackey. Um, today I thought I'd share with you how I made this, I don't know how I called it a gift bag box, because obviously it's the principle of a box, but then it's got the handle, which is the principle of a bag. Um, I uploaded one that I'd made for my dad for his birthday um, recently. Um, everyone went mad on it, so I thought I would come along today and create a video to share with you how I made it. Now, it's a really good size box. Um, let me just give you the finish measurements. So it measures 14 centimetres, which is five and three quarter inches, three inches in depth, and eight centimeters and then height wise oh it's, it's almost eight inches which in centimeters is doo -doo -doo, about 21 about 20 centimeters yeah 20 centimeters it's really good size um the one I made for my dad held um, aftershaves, socks, and two bars of chocolate. This one, I will show you what is inside. So this is, um, the idea for this box came from me purchasing. If I just show you what I purchased in here. So in here is a body shop hand wash and um, hand lotion and inside hopefully I can kind of show you in there I created two little circles so they just sit in there nicely and yeah there so it's a really nice gift I've, I have still got to make a tag for that um, so yeah let me share with you how I made it so you do need two sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock um, I've used eyelets to just finish off my holes. However, you don't need the eyelets. You, that is just an optional extra. You need some ribbon for the handle and the closure, the bow closure. Like I said, two sheets of cards, uh, 12 by 12 cardstock and then some DSP. So this originally was a 12 by 12 sheet and I've just trimmed it down. So yeah, that's all you need. Oh, and a pencil and a ruler is kind of handy. I've got a pencil here and a phone folder now I'm kind of going to try and go steady so you can craft along with me um, my measurements are going to be in centimeters however I'm going to add a conversion to inches um, in a blog post which I will tag in the box below so you're going to start off with your 12 by 12 cardstock so I'm going to use my trimmer to trim it up and I'm going to trim both sheets the same. So I'm going to trim it down to 23 centimetres. So 23 centimetres by 30.3. 30 Cardstock I'm using here today is Sahara Sand. I've just give it gone with a neutral background so then my paper, um, I can use whatever paper I fancy really. And then you're going to do the same again with your second piece. So trimming it to 23 centimetres by 30.3. Then here's what you're going to do. While it's in your trimmer, you're going to score it. Now I'm going to start off with this cardstock portrait. So you're going to score at 14.2. So just make sure you, if you're using a trimmer like mine, you grab the scoring piece and not the cutting piece. So 14.2 and then 22 centimetres. We get two score lines. You're going to turn now and score landscape at 7.8, 22. Point eight and 28.8 and then you're going to do exactly the same on the second piece and I'm going to read the measurements out again so portrait whoops 14.2 and 22 I feel like I'm roll calling for I'm a game of bingo <laughs> 7.8 <coughs> excuse me 22.8 and then again at 28.8 and you can put your trim up to one side for a minute and then you're going to bone fold up on all of the score lines 
And when you are bone foldering, is what you want to do is make sure when you're bone foldering, you bone fold them both the same way. So you end up with two identical pieces. I'll show you what I mean. Sometimes I get confused when I'm creating things like this and there's two pieces of cardstock. I, I almost feel like I want two, like a pair, like two opposites to each other, but you don't. You actually want two identical. So then they're, they're gonna stick together. So screwing it exactly the same again. So on all them, give them a good burnish. <clears throat> Now, I've made this box several times now. I think this is box number six or seven. And it's what I did the whole time I was constructing it. Um, a couple of times I glued these bits together. Or I did my trim and then I glued them together and I worked at it with as one big piece. It's, it's hard to manage. It, it feels clumbersome when you're trying to put the eyelets in and stuff. So I'm going to, the whole way through this, we will, we will do what we do on one, we're going to do on the other. And then... Uh, at this point, I will show you, we will then stick it together to start to form the box. So everything we're gonna do on one, we're gonna do on the other. So we're gonna start by trimming away some of these pieces. So I'm now just trimming away that bottom corner and then up the bottom, up the score line and I trim away all of the score line. Um, I find sometimes when I go to stick them the base together, bits overhang and stuff. So if you lose that score line altogether, I always find I get a neater finish. So I'm turning it up so you've got the other end at the top now. I'm going to cut that corner out and I just slightly angle that there. And we're going to just trim that there. And again, just losing that tiny little piece in there will make a huge difference. Ooh, I can't get hold of it though. Way. There we go. And we're going to do the same on this piece. So, angle, cut the corner completely away. Up the score line. So, oh, has it, uh, it's not up the score line, it's just slightly to the right and then slightly to the left. So we lose that all together. I'm going to turn it, lose that corner. And the same on this little piece here. Lose that tiny little bit out of there. Okay. Right, let's clear the deck a little bit. Now you're gonna need some adhesive. I always like to use um, liquid glue, be just because I find it a little bit more forgiving and I get a little bit more time with it. If, you're f if you prefer um, a, wet, a dry glue, a tape, um, double-sided red tape, feel free to use that. So first off we're gonna do, we're gonna stick this, this little flap here down. I hate raw edges. If anyone's been following me, any time I kind of make a 3D project, I always try and lose raw edges. And this is me losing the raw edge on the side of the box. So just sticking that down and giving it a really good bone folder. Burnish with the bone folder, I mean, sorry. And the same again. So adhesive, really burnish that down, really squidging the glue about, and it gets a really good stick down. We're still going to be working on this, this little piece here. This is where you need your ruler and pencil. So you're going to come in and you're just going to mark the centre. Actually, you probably want to do this from the wrong side just because I'm going to put a pencil mark. And I don't really remove my pencil mark. It can stay there. So we're just going to measure and dot the halfway point of this. This from excluding the adhesive flat piece, just measuring across that, that middle pit. So it's four, roughly four centimetres. Um, and we're going to do that on both of those pieces. So same again. And you just want to mark right on that top edge because this is now going to give you a point where you're going to put in some diagonal score lines. So when you put your diagonal score lines, you're going to put your ruler across to where those four um, score lines meet, and then you're going to bone fold her across like that. So just put those score lines in place. I always use my bone folder to put my 
score lines in place but if you prefer to use um, your trimmer you can use your trimmer so I'm just going to just give those a little burnish this doing this it really really does help when you form your box getting them side pieces to do what you want them to do so the same on this one Where them score lines meet up to your pencil mark where your score line cross there up to where your little pencil mark is and just flip it over and just give those little pieces a nice burnish and the same on this one So there we have two exactly the same. You can see now how they're forming and going to come together. So eventually we are going to stick them together down there. And then obviously these two edges will come round and glue together. You can, I think you can see what I mean by keeping it in two pieces for up until a certain point. It's more manageable. Um, right. So our next point, <clears throat> we're just going to take some bits out of here. So it's what you'll see on my box. It's hard to see. They kind of come into, there's a little nick in there. And then these two top bits come and slot in. So that's what we're just going to add. And to create that little slot piece, just try and get the camera quite close. We're going to just, you can see my little dot there. We're going to cut either side. Now, I've made several of these now is what I found is sometimes I didn't make my um, notch big enough. So I had to then go, okay, Laura, your notch is not big enough. Let's make it a bit bigger, which if you'd feel happier, don't make it, make it smaller than you think it needs to be. Because you can always, even if once the box is formed, you can make that notch smaller. So, or not, sorry, you can't make it smaller. You can make it bigger. Okay, because the fastening, as much as it's lovely fastening, um, you've got no raw edges across the top there. It does take a little bit of persuasion just to get them to do that. Okay, so I did one here where I did it slightly different and I've turned them in, but look at the difference. It just doesn't sit as nice as what this finish does. Um, it's, it's a lot neater across the top there and I'm so finicky with things like that. Um, it's best to persevere with with this but you'll see what I mean when I get to come to the closure bit it is fiddly it takes a little bit of persuasion to fill the cardstock to um, be gently persuaded where it's going to go right so now we're at this point we're now going to cut our DSP the DSP I only covered the two front the well, not the two front the front the back and then the two sides if you wanted to put some DSP across the top by all means do i'm going to use this time i'm going to use the um trimming the town dsp i've used all sorts of dsp um this one is also trimming the town i've used um this one is the heartwarming is it heartwarming hugs no that doesn't sound right heart the heartwarming dsp i've used that one i've used the when i did the birthday one for my dad i used the artistry um artistic or artistry blooms dsp um so i've really used a uh, sort of all sorts of dsp which is fun about this project it's birthday it's christmas it could be easter um it could be for a christening it really could be for a wedding any any project you want just change your papers up so i'm going to use this one with the little um i haven't used this side i've used this side of the dsp but i don't think i've actually used the little people i actually think it's really quite cute so yeah i'm going to use this side now just remember when you're cutting a directional paper you're cutting it the right way so in this for this instance we need 14.5 on the length so 14.5 and then the width is 13.7 and you need that twice so I'm going to do the same on this piece so 14.5 height by 13.7 so that's our front and back and then the two sides are again the same in the height 14.5 by 7.2 
there we go, it's one and 7.2, there we go. So that's our front, back and sides DSP cut. And now we can stick these to our box. So just now when you come to sticking everything down, make sure you've obviously got, this is the base of your box and this is gonna be the top. So just make sure that you stick everything, especially if your paper's directional, that you stick everything the right way up. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of adhesive and then pop that down. One, and there's the front. Just do it. So I always put glue all the way around the edges, not too close to the edge because you don't want it to ooze out. And then I just see that glue that just gives me enough a little bit of wiggle room that I can line it up and then commit. So then you're going to do the same on the other two pieces. So just lining it up where I want it, evening up my four borders round and then committing. <clears throat> Same again. I was gonna pause things and cut bits out of this, but I actually thought if I if I do it in my crafting pace of how I normally craft, hopefully people can craft along with me. You can pause me. Um, and it would be better than cutting bits out and stuff and jump into things, so. Right, so you can really see now our box is really taking shape. I'm loving the Sahara sand. Sahara sand is not a color that I actually go for a lot, but I'm actually really loving this. Right, so it's what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mark for our eyelets, and we're gonna put an eyelet in, in each of the sides and then one across each of the tops. So let's mark the ones on the top. So you're gonna find the center of this, this piece, which is roughly seven centimeters, and then two centimeters down. So you just give yourself a little cross. And then here, you're gonna measure from your score line down to two centimeters. Now, if your paper's really patterned like mine is, it's gonna make it a little bit harder to see. And then it's, so it's roughly the center from the score line to score line and it's four centimeters so just giving yourself hopefully you can see that i'm giving myself two little crosses there and there so then when i come in with my um cropper dial i'll be able to um punch my holes so seven and then down two anything that shows i've got a rubber here so four, and then two. So let's insert our eyelets. <clears throat> I'm using a cropper dial. I've had my cropper dial, I reckon, 11 years, maybe a little bit longer. Um, it's perfect for inserting eyelets, um, especially because it's got the long arm reach, so you can get to things a little bit further in your projects. That one here, I'm just gonna rub that pencil. I think the eyelet will cover that anyway, but just to be on the safe side. And the same again, so mark, lining up my crosses and hole punch, lining up my cross and hole punch. And then we're gonna insert our eyelets. Now these are retired stamping up eyelets. You don't necessarily need to use eyelets. You could quite easily use um, so there is, these eyelets are slightly tight, oh there we go, tight for my holes, I have to give them a really encouragement to go in. But you could actually reinforce your, your holes with um, a circle punch, um, if anything, it's not essential to, to do it. So just popping that eyelet in there and it's nice and neat. So just gonna pop that eyelet in the hole, they are a nice snug fit, which is nice. It means they don't fall out when you're trying to then push them in the holes. And the same again. I think these will actually, <coughs> excuse me, grip him. And 
there we go. So just pop my eyelets in. See, if you can see what I mean, if you've got both of these attached together, it makes it so hard. Um, one of the ones I did, I did do it in, in one long length. And it was um, frustrating, shall we say. <laughs> right, so now we've got the eyelets in. We're now ready to attach these together. So I'm going to lay it like that and attach these two together first. Again, I'm going in with wet adhesive, wet glue, um, the Tombow multi-purpose, because I, I just like the forgiveness and the bit of wiggle room that it gives me. But you can use um, tape, red double-sided tape, whatever you whatever you prefer. So I'm just lining that the the score line. So them score lines there, and then the score lines at the bottom there. And I'm just going to give that a good press. See what I mean? I can just, just adjust there with that glue. And I, I like that, the security that I've got, that reassurance that if it's not quite right, I can just... Then just give it a good burnish with your bone folder and just really move that glue about. And then I'm just going to do the same. I'm just going to bone folder on both sides. So there. And then flip and just do it the same on that side. Okay, I'm going to open it up, I'm going to lay that round and then hopefully that should all line up nicely, which it does. So just open that up and we're going to just run some adhesive down there. I still try and keep it away from that edge slightly because I don't want glue to ooze ooze out everywhere so just lining lining them score lines up give it a really good press and then I'm going to just thing it like that where it's come undone I've not oops I've not pressed that enough let's give it another press now there we go and then I can burnish it with my bone folder from both sides Okay, right, you can really see now the box is really coming together. So now we're going to close up our bottom of our box. So I'm just going to add a little bit of tiny adhesive um, just to harness those two together, hold them in place. And then I'm going to add adhesive. This is where I probably go a little bit OTT with adhesive and I really make sure I put loads on. This is the base, so you want it to be nice and strong. Um, you could, you can get a fair bit of stuff in here. This is a really good box. So this is where I said to you, sometimes I find bits can overhang here, but cutting away them, them extra bits on the score lines, you kind of lose that, which is, which is nice and tidy and neat and again lots of adhesive my glue feels like it's getting a little bit low there we go and over now when i was making the ones with the body shop stuff i actually put the hand lotion and the hand wash and everything in and it was acted as a nice weight but I'm just gonna put my hand in there and just really give that a good press down so it um, really sticks nicely. Now, if you wanted to make the one with the hand wash and the hand lotion, there's a link in the description box below with a link to my blog, which I'm gonna put the measurements for the little tray insert on my blog. Okay, so this is where this, um, this, as neat as this fastening is, it does take a little bit. Now I've got quite some good sized nicks and you can see it just, just takes a little bit of persuasion. Once the cardstock knows where it's going, it goes in beautifully, but it does take a little bit of time. And I am going to do this before I put my handle on. So... This is where, if you've not made your nicks quite big enough at this point, this is where you could make, if you think, ah, actually, I don't think my nicks are tight enough, you can um, 
add a bigger nick. But this is where I just use my scissors because you just want to open that up and then gently persuade that like you are going to go down there. Your cardstock you're going to do as I want you to do. I'm trying to be gentle because you do need to be gentle with it because you don't want to sort of over manipulate the cardstock and crease it. There. Just trying to, there we go. See, it's going right, it's in. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to check in there. You just want to check in there that everything's sitting nice and straight. I do actually wonder if, there we go, that's better. So there's. It's just training that, and you almost need to do that a few times so when the recipient receives the box, it is kind of trained. Now it's here, and we are actually going to open it again, frustratingly enough. So open it, and we're now going to add our handle. Now, the way I added my handle is the, the length of the ribbon, and you want to thread it out of one of the side ones, and then back in this side one, and then so it comes out. I gave it a double knot for extra security. There's no way that's slipping out of that eyelet. Now this is the point where you can decide how, how long you want your handle. Do you want it to have a long handle? Do you want it to have a short handle? I didn't want mine overly long, so I'm happy with it there. I need to then look at that and allow for my double knot. So I'm gonna guess it needs to be trimmed about there. I'm just going to double knot this ribbon back. There. And that is your handle. And we've got a nice handle on our box bag. So now and then if you were going to put goodies in it, you can fill it at this point. If you are that organised that you're making... I'm not always super organised that so I've got something to go in there. But So ribbon in. Again, give this gentle persuasion. It is getting there. Um, I think it's one of them things, the more you make something, you realise, can you see that? It's just, it's just that bit of cardstock there. There we go. So then that's nice and neat. And then we're just gonna tie a bow. I like quite a chunky ribbon on here. Um, I really like the red one that I did, that I showed you at the start. That got a really nice, oh, that's not long enough. Laura, you need to, a bit longer. There. I like it to be quite big. Big ribbon. Nice, pretty big ribbon. And then just trim that off there. And just trim that. So there you have, I think I've got a slightly longer handle possibly to what I had on that one. No, I haven't actually, they're about the same. But yeah, you can adjust the length of that hand. You don't even need to add a handle. You could just have it as a box. But there, all you'd need to add now is make yourself a pretty tag to hang off there. Or you could maybe make a um, make something to go on the front and stick on there. Um, entirely up to you. But that is the basic principle of how I made the gift box bag. Thank you so much for coming by and sticking with me. I hope you enjoy making it as much as I had fun putting it together. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for notifications of when I upload another one. Thank you again. Bye-bye.